The RAD 2X is a cable that plugs into your Sega Genesis that outputs 480p HDMI. Unlike every other plug and play solution available today, there is no lag and the image is processed correctly. I recently released a video that details all of that info, and this is a more beginner-friendly follow-up that shows how to use the RAD 2X with each model Genesis. There are tons of different versions of Genesis and Mega Drive consoles out there, and the RAD 2X should work with any one of them that has a multi-out connector, which is pretty much every one of them. The only things to note before this video gets started is that I'm going to be demoing my NTSC consoles that I got here in the US, and the RAD 2X will work with all of them, but what goes in comes out. So if you use an NTSC console from the US, you got to make sure your TV is a North American TV or accepts NTSC signals and vice versa. If you have a PAL console, you have to make sure that your display accepts PAL. It doesn't convert regions, but it does support both. So let's jump right in and get started. Simply plug the RAD 2X into your Genesis and your TV, then power on the console and wait for a signal. That's it. You can't really see the RAD 2X light in that previous shot, so here's a close-up. When you first power on the console, the light turns red and the RAD 2X scans for a signal. Once it finds the RGB signal, the light turns purple and it starts sending the signal to your TV. Can't get any easier than that. When using a 32X, connecting the RAD 2X is just as easy as using a composite video cable. First, make sure you connect the 32X's plastic spacer so it doesn't wobble on the Genesis. Then, connect the Genesis and 32X with the jumper wire it came with. If you lost yours, you can buy extras in the same place you get the RAD 2X itself. Then, connect the RAD 2X to the 32X's output port and make sure power is connected to both the 32X and Genesis. Then, just plug in your cartridge and power it on. You can use a RAD 2X and the 32X on the Genesis 1 as well. You'll just need a different adapter that lets you connect the 32X to the Genesis 1's different AV output. With the 32X connected, you could play both 32X games and Genesis games. So if you own a Genesis 1, one option is to just get the Genesis 2 version of the RAD 2X, hook it up as shown here, and just leave the 32X plugged in at all times. While there is a version of the RAD 2X for the Genesis 1, some people might want to use the Genesis 2 RAD 2X simply because it could be used on multiple consoles. If that's the case, you can get cables from HD Retrovision that allow the RAD 2X to be used on both a Genesis 1 and a Sega Master System with mono audio. If you're looking to use the RAD 2X's Genesis 2 cable in stereo on the Model 1 Genesis, you'll have to buy an adapter that gets audio from the front headphone jack. I'll have links in the description for all of these things. Next up is my favorite way to play Sega CD games, the Sega CDX. This tiny little console is a Genesis and Sega CD built into a device the size of an old CD player. As an FYI, the RAD 2X will work with any Sega CD and Genesis combo. I'm just showing the CDX because it's freaking awesome. Here's the Genesis 3 working through the RAD 2X, and while I'm showing this video, I'd like to clarify a common misconception. All Genesis 3 consoles output a high-quality RGB signal. There was a rumor years ago that some didn't output RGB, but that's wrong. All Genesis 3s do. Unfortunately, Genesis 3s only output mono audio and aren't compatible with Virtua Racing. But luckily, there's a mod called the Sega Triple Bypass that makes these tiny little Genesis consoles awesome. After installing the Triple Bypass, they output excellent quality stereo improve the video, and you could even restore Virtua Racing functionality. More info on the Triple Bypass in the description. Speaking of high quality, there's something I noticed when testing the RAD 2X. Since the scaling is only 2X to 480p, the typical video noise you'll see in Genesis 1s isn't as noticeable. As an example, here's a completely stock Genesis 1 running through the RAD 2X in 480p on my 1080p monitor. Now here's that same Genesis 1 running through the open source scan converter in 1080p. While the image is much sharper, everything about the signal gets scaled, including the jail bar interference, 
making it much more noticeable. In this situation, the Rad 2X actually looked better. Now, by no means am I trying to tell people that 480p looks better than 1080p. I'm simply trying to make the point that the Rad 2X is designed as a beginner tool and in its current form, you could plug it into pretty much any Genesis or Master System and be okay with the image that comes out of it. Let's take another look at the OSSC running in 4X 1080p with the Sonic the Hedgehog title screen on that same exact Genesis 1 that's had no mods done to it. It's just a perfectly stocked Genesis 1. You could really see all of the interference get highlighted here, and it really stands out. And that's why so many people that are chasing the sharpest pixels possible and the highest scale image that you can get do things like RGB mods, RGB bypasses in any way they can to enhance and clean up the signal. And if that's what's important to you, that's absolutely awesome. And stuff like the OSSC is the right choice for you. I just really wanted to drive the point home that the Rad 2X cables are meant as plug and play beginner solutions, or I guess as backup solutions for experts that already have those other crazy setups. And since it's only scaling 2X to 480p, a lot of these crazy little interference things you see like jail bars aren't picked up as well, so it blends in nicely and you don't really notice them as much. So once again, I'm not trying to tell you to only play your consoles in 480p, I just wanted to make the point that for any beginners starting out, just plug this thing into whatever console you own and know that whatever Genesis console you have is going to look pretty darn good. So that was just a basic overview of how to connect different Genesis consoles to the Rad 2X Genesis 2 version. Once again, they should work with any Genesis that has a typical Genesis 2 style 9-pin mini DIN. That means certain model Wonder Mega or JVC XI consoles that don't have the mini DIN won't work. But if it's an official Genesis with the multi-out like this, you could expect it'll work fine. In fact, if you know what you're doing, you could even use the Genesis 2 version of the Rad 2X on any classic gaming device that uses the Genesis 2 mini DIN as long as it outputs the proper signal. Now you need to be extremely careful about this because so many mods over the years have used that connector and outputted a different kind of signal and normally what would happen is nothing, you just wouldn't get it to work at all. But if there's a different kind of pinout or if there's a different voltage going through there, you could kill the Rad 2X just by plugging it in and trying. So please, please, please make sure you know what you're doing if you try to use this on a device that's not a Genesis. But there are some pretty cool mods out there as well as some off the shelf plug and play devices that use the Genesis 2 mini DIN and outputs the exact signal that the Rad 2X would be expecting. Some good examples of that are things like TurboGrafx-16 and PC Engine consoles, as well as a number of super guns and some other devices. So as long as you know the signal's compatible, feel free to use it. Just please make sure you know what you're doing. Well, that's it for this time. I'll have some more follow-up videos on the Rad 2X cables that focus on each of the individual versions and what's the best way for beginners to use them with their consoles. But for now, if you'd like more in-depth information, please check out the main Rad 2X review, because I really go into detail as to why they're the best plug-and-play HDMI choice for all of these classic consoles, and why you really should be using these instead of the others. Also, if you liked what you saw here today, please consider subscribing to any of the support services like Patreon or Subscribestar. And of course, subscribe to this channel on YouTube, and check out the weekly podcast to be kept in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.